Thank you. So good evening, everyone, and welcome to module five of Step Up to Success. We were just saying, don't quite know where those five weeks have gone. Uh, one week left. So I hope that you've enjoyed it all so far. I've had some um, some lovely feedback from you, which has been really lovely. And when we get to the end of it, I am really going to ask you, I know it's hard to give me honest feedback when you know I'm reading it and I know who you are, but I would like really honest feedback about the modules, what you liked, what you'd like more of and all that sort of stuff, just so that we can craft it, you know, for a future course. So please, um, I, I, I will accept feedback would be, and it'd be lovely. Um, just a quick sort of recap again. I know we've talked about the, you know, I still think that module one, the mindset module was probably the most important module because if your head's not in the right space, anything mm -hmm. else you do will not flow and will, will not work. Um, if you have got background noise, if you, if you don't mind uh, muting yourself if you, as we go through, but it's, it's okay at the moment. So, so keep, please keep revisiting that module one and keep thinking about those, you know, the affirmations and how you're feeling and, your challenges and your fears and your blocks and, your, and all the things that are stopping you because they will change as well. You know, you, it's not a piece of work you can do once and then go, yeah, that's all done now. I'm all tickety boo. It will keep changing. And what we're going to cover tonight will only work and inspire and motivate you to take action to do this if you have the right mindset about it. <laughs> um, so some of you are going to look at what I do tonight and just think, oh, that's completely irrelevant to me. I think you will, possibly. And that's because you don't believe that you can change where you are significantly by doing something that seems quite simple. <laughs> now that, that, yeah, you'll, you'll know what I mean when I get into this, because I, I will always talk about, the, obviously, the utility warehouse version of this, because I know a lot of you are in here. And there's lots of ways you can use, if you followed what I'm going to teach you tonight, even with your utility warehouse business alone, you could make a difference. However, I'm still, my goal is to get you all building bigger networks of people, you know, that you can actually then tap into and can provide you with an, an ongoing, completely consistent stream of customers so that you that doesn't have to be a worry because most of the people I speak to most of the one-to-ones I've had it's mindset and feeling like a lack of abundance of customers and clients coming your way they are the two big issues with everybody you speak to so some people then blame that on the mindset but it's a, a chicken and egg situation isn't it because if you had a flow of customers wanting what what it is you deliver your mindset would instantly be more positive anyway. And then the positive mindset would then start to, to attract people to you. So I just want you to keep that at the front of your mind as we're going through tonight. And also don't think that you are not good enough to head up a Facebook group, for example, and be the leader, the admin, and the person that is out there. Because I bet $100, some of you, £100, where did that come from? Um, I bet some of you will be thinking... Um, Oh, well, I couldn't, I can't do that because I wouldn't want to be the authority in that group because I'm not confident enough, particularly when I talk about doing lives and, and all that sort of stuff. So again, just please follow, follow me on this little journey tonight and, and write the notes, absorb yourself in it. Let your mind go into overdrive about where this could take you, even if you're not ready for it right now. OK, so even if you don't think I'm not going to do that now, if you want to double and treble your business in 2022 and have a flow of customers coming to you for whatever your business is, this stuff will work. <laughs> um, if you've already got customers and you would like to be nurturing them better and communicating with them better and getting more referrals, then this stuff will work. All right. So it, it's fact that it works. It's just whether you are prepared to do the work. And it's like anything. There is no magic pill. You know, there is always some work that has to be done. So have you all managed to have the workbook for tonight? Did you all find it yeah. in the Facebook group? Adam, don't worry too much if you didn't, because it's fairly sort of obvious what we are going to be jotting down. You've got your notepad and pen. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, I've really tried to build the slides with the workbook tonight, so it should just flow really well if you have got the workbook. If you haven't, you can just make notes as we go through anyway. It really doesn't matter. Right. So let me jump straight into the slides and we will get cracking hopefully. Uh, I just want to move your lovely faces. Swing that thing again. Okay, can you all see that all right? So I can see Adam, Marie and Barry tonight. So you're my three. <laughs> you're the three that have got to stay awake, stay engaged, look interested, no falling asleep. Right, okay, so 
step five tonight we are going to talk about building and nurturing an audience um, that might be something that you've thought of before or not and sales funnels and email lists um, and again this might sound like language that you're not used to but it is all actually quite straightforward as we jump into it so let's just get cracking so i need to move this lovely bar if i can let's get it down the bottom right so what is an audience and why build one um, so in this context, building an audience is the process of growing and nurturing a group of people who are your ideal customers or clients. All right. So if you just think about that, so it's growing and nurturing a group of people who are your ideal customers and clients. And you do that or you're going to do that through regular communication, giving lots of value to them so that you can really develop relationships and move them to a warm group of people who are ready to buy from you. So we talk about that a lot. When we talk about the form, you know, the, um, the family, occupation, recreation, in conversation, all of that is about warming people up really and getting people to know, like, and trust you. Because business is all done with people you know, like, and trust. You know, we buy from people we know, like, and trust. So this is a process to have more people in your space who will come to know, like, and trust you, even if they didn't know you in the beginning. So this is how to build outside of your, you know, your current network. All right, we will come to questions at the end because I reckon there might be some tonight, which is absolutely fine. So just obviously if anything crops up, just write it down or stick it in the chat and we'll come to it later. My slide's already misbehaving. There we are. Uh, right, so in your workbook then, so this is um, page one in the workbook. So there's a bit there, why build an audience? And then we're gonna talk about the five key ways of building an audience. So this can be called a sales funnel, which sounds very salesy, obviously, um, but it is called a sales funnel. It's a funnel of people. So if you're talking to lots of people about your business, in some ways that you're, talking, you're, you're putting them in your funnel. All right. So when we go and we approach people about you to our house, potential customers or partners, we're having a physical conversation with them and they're basically in our funnel then. But it's how we keep them there or how we move them on to, to the next bit. So I'm going to suggest that your sales funnel for some of this is a Facebook group, um, because at the moment, that is probably one of the easiest places to have people where you can get them engaged with you. You can get them to know you. Um, you can help them, you know, give them value, et cetera, et cetera. And this works even if your ideal customer is not necessarily on Facebook. You know, we talked about the different groups, depending on how old they are and whether they might be on Instagram, they might be on LinkedIn. You can actually still promote your Facebook group through all the different forms of social media. It still works to actually link them back to your group. Networking. So we covered that last week. So obviously, again, if you're meeting people networking, I talked to you about connecting with them on Facebook or on social media. But one step further is to actually invite them into your specific Facebook group. All right. So that you're actually getting them into this place where you can then communicate with a lot of people at once and you can really get your message to them. And you can the biggest thing about this is actually you can give them value and you can connect them with each other. You know, so you can start putting people together. So they want to be in that group. They want to be in that space because it's of use to them, not just of use to you. In fact, it needs to feel more of use to them than it does to you. All right. So that's why a group can work really well. Now, breadcrumbing, you might never have heard this expression before in this context. Breadcrumbing simply means leaving a little, you know, <laughs> row of breadcrumbs for people to follow you <laughs> into where you want them to be. And how you do that is by, again, you know, we talked about having five other Facebook groups that you um, are in regularly, that you get to be known in, you network in, you become useful in. And then you basically, when it's relevant, and if they're your ideal customer, you say, oh, by the way, I've got this great group where I'm building this lovely community. Community is a brilliant word to use with this. I've got a lovely community building over here that I think you would do really well in, you know, and, you know, we haven't got an accountant in this community yet. I think it'd be really good for you. Or, you know, I know there's a couple of people and they're interested in writing a book. I, I think you could do really well over here and help some people. You can create a lead magnet which we're going to come on to in a minute, because again, that might be terminology that you haven't thought of or used. You've probably seen it loads, but you might not know actually what it is or how to implement it really simply. And the other way, thing we're going to talk about tonight is developing an email list and why that's important. All right. And why we shouldn't rely on social media for our list, because there's lots of really good reasons why we shouldn't. 
Um, okay, so then we go on to. So um, I'm not going, going to go into the massive technical nitty gritty of how to set up a Facebook group. I know some of you are much more skilled on Facebook than others. Um, you know, if there is a need, we could have a much more broken down session on on something like that. But it, setting up a group is fairly straightforward. If you go to groups, you go to create, you can have a mess about with it. You don't have to invite anybody into it until you're happy with it. So you can literally set up a group that's just you and um, to have a practice and practice loading pictures and everything else. But I want you to just think about this. And this might be the one that you don't get off, you know, straight off pack tonight. If you haven't thought about this before. I know we mentioned it before. But what Facebook group could you set up? What could be the name and the purpose of that group? So, for example, I know lots of you are in Utility Warehouse. Obviously, I want you to think about your team and a group that you could set up for your team as a separate thing, because that is something when your team starts to grow, you definitely would be good to have. Um, you could set up a, a community group, a group um, locally where you encourage um, you know, local businesses, local other, either male, female, could be dads in business, could be ladies in business. It could be, you know, whatever you want to call it, you could, you could have a group that is going to be, you could develop into a networking group. So there's no reason in your local area why you couldn't start a group that starts as a Facebook group and then turns into one that also has face-to-face -face meetings. You know, if you're thinking about developing the network side of it, you could start up a group that's literally all about saving people money. That it's not directly utility warehouse, but it, it could be a you know hints and cheats and tricks for saving money group where you know that all the people in there are going to be your ideal customer because they're people that are trying to you know cut corners and, and have discounts and all that sort of stuff. That could be what group you could do. I hope in a way that you think of something a little bit outside the box, as in around a hobby that you've got or something that you like doing so for example I know when I was chatting to Vanessa the other day um oh Vanessa what was it oh, interior design wasn't it I went then so um Vanessa's quite interested in interior design now that would be a fabulous group to set up of people that like you know doing interior design get a few designers in there people asking questions giving each other advice art's a great one uh, Jane I keep talking about Greek cooking but that would be you know you'd get a whole group of people that wanted to come together into a place and find out how to cook Greek food well so I could go on and on. I'm just trying to get your imagination going, because remember, whatever the group is about, it's about getting people together, um, people together that could be your ideal clients. You need to think what what you can get from it. And later on, you can actually provide people what they want in a group and make money out of it. Um, so that that's, again, sort of the next step. If you've got a bunch of people in a group and they want something, you can find someone that will come and deliver to them. And if it's your group, you can actually make some money out of that later or later on when you've built a decent audience um so how are you going to get it set up to start with whatever your group is um obviously invite some of your current contacts but only if they're relevant so for example passion to pocket my facebook group that i've recently set up has got about 300 and something members just under 350 now but i've got 2700 friends on facebook but it was not relevant for me to go through all my Facebook friends and invite them all into the group. Because if they haven't run, if they're not running their own business, you know, if I didn't feel they were a good fit and they weren't my ideal client, then I simply didn't invite them in there. All right. So it's not, you don't just go and invite everybody. You have to give it a little bit of thought about who's going to come in here and who's going to find value from this group. Talk about it. Talk about your group uh, when you're networking on or offline, when you're speaking to people, connecting to people. I've said about the five groups and start to breadcrumb. We'll have probably some questions about breadcrumbing and what that actually looks like. And I can give some examples of that. So quite a lot of the people in Passion to Pocket, I've breadcrumbed <laughs> from other, from Mums in Business, from a few other networking groups I'm on, other business networking groups I'm on. When people have been asking questions about setting up a business or something that I know I could answer, you know, I've started having conversations with them and then they've come across over into us. We're going to talk again about the lead magnet in a minute. And I just need to move that. Um, yeah, I mean, the important thing in any group is to give loads of value. All right. So, you, you know, really think about how you can help the people in that group. OK, so bread crumbing. Oh, I couldn't, really couldn't say that then. Bread crumbing. So it's looking for opportunities to connect, share what you do, bring people into your world. It's as simple as that. Um, but there is a right and a wrong way to do that. It's not about spamming people. It's not about, you know, suddenly sending load of, pri load of private messages to people. I get it all the time at the moment. People just messaging me saying, oh, hi, I thought you might want to come and join my group. 
but I hadn't had any contact with this person before. So it's, it, you know, that's a, a spammy message. Whereas if we had started chatting in a, in a feed, you know, and in comments, and then I'd said, feel free to message me, that's great. Then that's a different thing. But don't just go private message and spamming people. You need to, there needs to be a connection. They need to want to come in. Um, and so a leads magnet, let's just, we'll just touch on that um, for a minute. So basically a leads magnet is when you give something away in exchange for an email address. That's it in very, very simple terms. So you say to someone, um, would you like this free top guide to, I'm just gonna move this bar again. Um, so would you like my guide to how to publish a book for free? Um, give me your email address and I'll send it over to you. All right. And so that's one way to start building up your list of email addresses. Um, we're going to talk more about how you nurture the audience and how you connect with them via email in a second. But your free piece of information, you, can, you could all think of something. It's got to be relevant to whatever group you want to do. So my lead magnet, some of you may have seen it, it's in Passion to Pocket. The one, the first one I did was just 10 simple steps to building your own business. You know, so that was it. So I thought, well, if people are starting a business or they want some help with their business, they're going to download this 10 simple steps. It's quite a nice PDF document that they get. Um, and, and then it invites them at the bottom, says, if you'd like to, you know, connect with me more, join Passion to Pocket Facebook group. So the lead magnet not only builds your, your email list, but it's also encouraging people into your online Facebook group. So it could, you know, five ways to save money. 10 simple steps to cooking a nice Greek meal. <laughs> I keep going back to that one. Um, whatever, you know, whatever it is that you, you, that's relevant to your group, relevant to your audience, it could be, you know, you could put 10, 10 simple steps to, um, to build a passive income, or it could be three simple steps to build a passive income. If you wanted to create a group about um, lifestyle and living, and choices and freedom and passive income, you know, that's a brilliant one for anyone that's in utility warehouse. It could be a group on working, it could be a group called working from home, but not a spammy, you know, loads of people just advertising their MLM opportunities, some real value in there about what it's like to work from home. You know, there's so many things you could do that will link back to, to you being able to create and grow this audience. I get excited. I have so many ideas. I have to keep slapping myself around the face and say, stop it, stop it, stop it. Because <laughs> you just got to do one thing at a time. But there are loads. And if anyone wants a brainstorming session about it, then, then shout because it's it's good. Um, right. So I started just talking about this a minute ago, really. So the lead magnet. So it can be as simple as, would you like this? Yes, please. Send me your e email address. You send it to them. Via email, you've got their email address. So that's how I started doing it. Super, super simple. And uh, when we get you all brave enough to be doing lives, um, a live way of introducing that is really good. So a live video and then a call to action at the end saying, by the way, if you'd like, so what you can do in a live, for example, is say, right, I, I'm going to give you three top tips to building your own business or three first steps to building your own business. So you do a live on the first three steps and then you say, I've got seven more. You can have for free, send, you know, connect with me here, send me your email address, I'll send it across to you. So that's just another way of, of getting that out there. Or for a more automated system, and I am not technical, many of you will know that, I've worked it out. <laughs> um, there is a fairly simple way, again, I'm using MailerLite for my email campaigns. It's free, up to a thousand email addresses, I think. So it's free. So you can start capturing email addresses into, there are, other, uh, there are others, but I'm finding this one good. You can have different sections in there. So you could have one mailer like campaign for your customers. You could have one for potential partners. You could have one for existing partners. And I wish I'd started it, you know, 12 years ago, because I'd have a big, big, big email list of, you know, of people in there. I've started putting potential partners in there and it's not about spamming them. It's about giving, you know, you can drip feed them information and they can unsubscribe. The thing by doing it automated like that is it's all very GDPR correct because there's a big unsubscribe button. You know, they can unsubscribe from emails at any time. So it's it's legal and it's not spammy. But in MailerLite, you can not only put all your emails in there so you can set up email campaigns, but you can also set up sites which are basically a landing page. So you'll have you'll have been on a landing page to book for this course. Um, so that was set up through MailerLite. So it's just a simple landing page. You can create it quite simply 
that captures the email address and then it can trigger a sequence of emails to that person if you if you set it up right um another i mean there are lots of reasons well, actually i think it's the next slide so i'll shut up for a minute so email nurture sequence we'll talk about in a minute what you know what does that mean what can you talk to people about in emails and of course it's all about getting them back into the facebook group it is a fact that in this day of too much inf overload of information on online stuff, um, I think I mentioned this a few weeks ago, that it used to be people see something seven times before they buy. So people have to see or hear or feel or notice or be aware of something seven times before consciously the brain will accept it as real and trusted before they buy. Nowadays, it's 24 times. <laughs> it's 24 times because... We have got the attention span of gnats now. And, you know, social media has just, your ping pong. If I pick up my phone now, I could show you, there'll be 100,000 notifications in 14 different places. And you're just ping ponging yourself around all the time. Um, and that's why actually it's even more effective these days to have a group and an email, um, you know, sort of campaign backing it up. So it's, it, it's the way you do, you've got to do it cleverly. So you're not spamming people, you're not overdoing it, but that you can just trickle through information. I haven't mentioned Facebook pages very much on this training, um, but it is a good idea to have a Facebook page. Um, so a Facebook page is almost like your shop window, particularly if you haven't got a website. So a Facebook page is sort of static on Facebook, but only 3% of your audience will ever see what you post on a Facebook page. They're the least noticed part of Facebook. Facebook doesn't push them out there. The only, the best way is to do lives on there, you know, and have loads of connection and, and stuff going on. However, if you've got a Facebook page, you can then again, use the page to direct people into your group. In an active Facebook group, you can get 70 to 80% of interaction or 70 to 80% of people seeing the, the stuff you, you put out. So it's a massive difference. And that's why groups are so effective for communication and for building your audience. Um, right, so a few reasons um, in case I haven't said it. Obviously, um, one of the big ones is, and this happened, didn't it, a while ago? I think, where was I? I was somewhere that I didn't even notice, but Facebook went down, didn't it, for hours one night? Was it Facebook and Instagram? I think I might have been, was I in the aquarium or something? I think I'd gone to the London Aquarium, so I was underground in the aquarium, I didn't notice. But, yeah, it was, wasn't it? So Facebook went down, and and Instagram went down. The thing is, if you've got your whole audience and you're just relying on one social media channel, you know, and anything happens to it, or you get blocked or get put in Facebook jail, which is quite common. <laughs> Facebook are good at just, for no apparent reason, just saying you've used it wrong. So sorry, you've got to explain to us what you were doing. But if you've still got, if you've got your email list, you've still got a way of communicating with those potential customers and, you know, whoever is on that list. So that's one good reason. Again, you can build relationships. You can put more in an email, can't you, than you can in a Facebook post. So the way people are going to get to know you best is through email and Facebook lives. I'm going to keep coming back to the lives because that no like and trust, you can't get that across in a post. People need to hear you, meet you, see you, you know, decide whether they want to work with you or not. Um, and you can be more consistent with your email campaign if people are not engaged on Facebook. Um, obviously, again, you can use your email list to invite people into your Facebook group. So they both funnel each other, actually, but but everything's funneling sort of both ways. And then, of course, um, you can use your email list to also sell when it's appropriate. So, you know, it depends whether you're always selling to your audience or whether, you know, it depends what you do. It depends whether it's a service. I mean, if it was utility warehouse um, and I had a group I wouldn't be selling as a customer in every email I would be really trying to give them some value give them some useful hints and tips all sorts of stuff you could do even if you were talking about services without actually saying would you like to be my customer <laughs> you don't have to be that obvious this is about being much more intelligent in your approach to marketing um, and the same with being a partner you could tell stories in that email all the time about how you've helped people how you've helped partners what's happened with partners without actually saying do you want what i've got um so that's just if you were doing it you know for you to your house all the other things i've said you won't be selling all the time a lot of it will be just providing value you could ask other people if they want you to put anything into your email so you could ask people in your group if i do a monthly newsletter would you like anything to go out this month and again that's great value passing it both ways because they'll want to do that Okay, so back to the Facebook group now. Um, <coughs> ways of keeping that, keeping the content going. Um, it, you know, it, it can be hard work. I've got too many on the go at the moment. Um, 
but that a lot of it you can schedule as well so once you've got a group you can actually schedule your posting which is a really cool tool so you can actually sit down for a couple of hours and schedule your post for the next month um obviously you want to interact it with a bit of live stuff and a bit of stuff that's actually happening and uh, you know change it up but the main things you want to be putting in that in the content in your facebook group has got to be education value information you know, based around whatever the subject of the group is, you, you want to be giving more than you're taking. It's exactly what I said about the networking. Give as much information as you can, value, education, help them. Um, it's also got to be fun and it's got to be social. Remember, Facebook is social media. So there has got to be an element of that that people want to hang around. So, you know, it's got to be fun and social as well. So this is sort of mixing up the posts, if you like, mixing up what you're going to do. Networking and promotion opportunities. So most groups have a day a week where they say, you know, share away, put in your links, put in your websites, do whatever you want to do. When you do that for other people, they're more likely to hang around because basically they want to promote their stuff. You know, that's what a lot of people are there. They're there because they want to sell as well. Inspiration and motivation. It doesn't matter what your group is. You can keep it very upbeat, very inspiring, very motivating. You know, you can help people just feel like they're having a nicer day. And then again, it could have an element of it that you actually do physical face to face stuff, you know, events, trainings, that type of thing. Um, and later on, you could turn your group into a paying community or membership. So there's lots and lots of uh, Facebook groups that start as free groups and they give loads and loads of value. And then it gets to sort of not doesn't really get to a point, but the person running it has said, right, that's my free stuff. Um, but if you pay a bit of money, you can come in and you can have this stuff. So, for example, Mums in Business. The main Facebook group is all completely free. We do charge for face-to-face -face meetings, but then the Leona that runs it has got two spin-offs of that. So she's got one group that you pay £10 a month to go in, and there's one training a month, and there's access to a few extra trainings, and I think a networking. And then she's got one that you pay £40 a month in, and that one you have much more ability to promote what you do. There's more networking, there's more training. You know, So that's just an example of how you can actually provide people with more. And actually that a paying membership group is a great way of having recurring revenue it's not passive because obviously you've got to go in there and do something you know you've got to plan it you've got to you've got to bring people together but you don't have to be the person giving all the information in a pay group you you've just got to be the person facilitating that and bringing people together um there's one lady uh, that I've met who has a group actually obviously didn't do very well through covid but she she put together a group of people that just like going to the theater and she does, you know, she's not an actor, actress, singer, anything like that, but she just found a few sites where she could get discounted tickets. So she puts them in the group. They all do reviews of all, you know, where they go. She charges 30 pounds a month for that group. And she's got, I think, 250 people in there. So you do the maths on that. You know, that was someone that just liked to go to the theater and just bought, a, a, you know, a group of people together that she's facilitated and that's her recurring income. Um, so we'll come out and do questions in a minute. I just wanted to tell you about this because I know that we meant, I mentioned this and also it was in the survey and lots of you said you would be interested as long as it was cheap enough, <laughs> which I appreciate all your honesty, love it. Um, so I am going to put on a three day workshop in January, um, 4th, 5th and 6th, like a workshop, 7 o'clock, it will be recorded, you'll have a proper workbook and a planner. It's about that wheel of life that we talked about a little bit about uh, reviewing 2021, finding out what you want to do in 2022 and really, you know, making a goal in all the areas of your life that you want to improve on and really digging down deep onto how to make that happen. Um, so I will obviously I'll put this in the group as well there, but it's basically it's 35 pounds uh, for you guys and it's going to be three it's only it's in the evening so it's not three full days but obviously there'll be some work to do around it it'd be a great way of just getting 2022 planned out if you haven't done it already and just thinking ahead and you know why can't you double or treble your business next year there's no reason at all why you can't um but it does take a little bit of planning and thinking about and working through all the different things that you might have to do or want to do um okay so that's it and then next week is our last module so we're going to talk about everything pretty much that we've covered and also talk about creating raving fans, uh, which is basically, again, that stream of referrals, which is going to be very, very useful to all of us. Right. So I'm going to actually just stop the recording now. So thank you very much for watching. If you are on catch up. <laughs>